So wouldn't it be cool to live stack C star images using SharpCap as we get them? Although it won't be traditional stacking and processing, live stacking is still pretty cool. The C star is an amazing piece of technology and one of the best features it has is the ability to live stack your images for you. But one of the worst things about its live stacking feature is that you have almost no control over what you can see aside from some contrast, some brightness and some saturation controls, you've got almost nothing else. On the other hand, SharpCap has been doing live stacking for years and you have much more granular control over what you can do, such as playing with the rejection controls, playing with whether or not airplanes get uh, removed from your images, playing with the linear gradient removal, etc. So wouldn't it be cool to live stack C star images using SharpCap as we get them? So in this video, I'll show you exactly how you can do that. And there's two like sub methods that I'm going to show you. One is where you connect directly to the C star. It's easier to do. You just connect directly to it and, and SharpCap will start stacking for you. And the second method is a little bit more advanced. It requires a little bit of scripting because we want to copy the files over from the C star to our local drive so that when SharpCap stacks them, it's much faster. And if we ever change the pre-processing steps or the rejection algorithms, we can clear out our stack and then restack them over and over again really quickly. And I thought I was so smart figuring this out. I thought I was the first person to do it, but after I recorded a bulk of the video, I looked on Cloudy Nights and I noticed that someone has done this months earlier. And as far as I can tell, Say on Cloudy Nights was the first person to do this. So kudos there, a link to his thread in the description below. And Say utilizes the first method that I talked about where he connects directly to the C star to get the images. This involves a few steps. And the first step is to con connect your computer to the C star. If you're working in the field and you have a laptop, you can connect directly to the C star Wi-Fi. But if you're at home or you're connected to an external Wi-Fi network, then you need to set your C star into station mode so you can connect both your C star and your computer to the exact same network so you can access the C star directly. So to do that in the C star on the bottom right hand side, click on me and then click on Wi-Fi. Then you'll see station mode, so you click on that and you turn it on. It can take a couple of seconds to find the Wi-Fi network. So find your own and connect to it. And once it's connected, click on the little I for information and make a note of the IP address. You may not need it, but if you do, this is the IP address. So that was pretty easy. So now we need to find our target and our subject for today's video is M31, the Andromeda Galaxy. In the C star, let's quickly find M31. I already have the C star set up outside, so I click on stargazing. I find M31 here. And then I click on go gazing. And now it's going to start doing its thing, including a horizontal calibration. So I'll fast forward through that. And now I force it to do an autofocus. And about three minutes later, it already started to take 10 second exposures and it's stacking and we can see that on the screen directly. So the C star will continue to take these images and then we'll pull these into sharp cap and do our stacking there as well. So back on our computer here, first we want to open up, you know, your computer or my PC, whatever this is called, and you click on map network drive. So when I click this, I get a new window here and I, it needs an address, a folder address. So if you have just one C star and your network allows you to connect via host names, you can actually do C star and then you click on browse. You do backslash backslash C star. Of course you click on browse and you can see your C star drive here, including the inner directories. But if you, if you don't see this for some reason, then you can actually do backslash backslash 192.168.1.203. It'll be whatever IP address that you saw in the Wi-Fi settings of the C star. So plug that in there, you click on browse and you get the exact same thing. So now of course, because I looked up C star earlier, it's looking, it's, you can see C star here, but you can see that it's the exact same things between the two of them. So I'm just gonna keep it simple and just do C star, C star and click on OK. Uh, actually, I need to do C star and then I need to do EMMC images. Great. Uh, and on my network drive list here, I have now EMMC images. So now if I go into my works, now I can see all the directories that were created by the C star with images, both the stacked and the subframes that were taken. And now we'll be working with actually the M31 sub, which, which currently has quite a bit of data. Now let's take a look at SharpCap. So now that we have SharpCap open, we can start live stacking from our C star directly. All right, so we're going to set up a first a folder camera. So we do folder monitor camera here, command cameras, folder monitor camera. Once that opens up, we get these options. So the 
resolution is going to be incorrect until it reads the first image. So it's trying to read something from uh, the wrong night, right? So we're going to go into tools. We'll do live stacking. And I'm going to pause this, make sure it doesn't start stacking. Then on the right hand side here, before I click on browse, I want to make sure that some of the other pre-processing steps are correct. So in the subtract dark, uh, we're gonna click on this drop down and we're gonna click on none. The options that you have are hot pixel removal, hot and cold pixel removal, and any previous dark images that you've subtracted. Uh, since these dark images are from different cameras, they're not gonna work. And technically speaking, all of the C star images are already dark subtracted, so that's not something that we need to worry about, so we'll just click on none. Same thing with the flats, we don't have any flats that we want to take. Uh, background subtraction, uh, the default one is off, but uh, linear gradient removal is probably a really good one. Uh, last night I was experimenting with some of these two other experimental ones, I didn't really see a difference, so we'll just keep it linear gradient removal. You can do remove satellite trails, I am just gonna keep it off, see if there are any satellite trails, we'll see it. Frame rate limit, you'd wanna keep it on maximum, but since I'm doing a demo, I'm going to set this to one every 30 seconds to simulate a real imaging session. The DBR preview, by default, many cameras are RGGB, but this, uh, the C-Star image is actually Gerbuga, or GRGB, GRBG. Yes, it's a, it's a weird one. So we'll leave that, and then we'll cl close this out. Output format, TIFF, you can pick any of these other files. I like TIFF. The resolution is going to change dramatically to 1080 by 1920. So we'll click on source folder, browse. This is going to be the easiest option. So let's go to my PC. We have our new EMMC images folder, my works. And what we're targeting today is going to be M31 sub. So if you go in here, we see all of these images. It has fits files, uh, fit files, JPEGs, and uh, it's like a thumbnail JPEG file as well. So we go back to my works, make sure M31 is selected and you click on all images in selected folder. It loaded and it already detected there are 2300 images in there and the resolution has updated. So now if I click on play, it's going to load one frame every 30 seconds. So it loaded that first one and you see that the first image it tried to load is a JPEG file and it says image not compatible with previous images, size, colors, blah, blah, blah. It's because we're trying to go for a raw image. So, so you can see it skipped it all the way to the, uh, the fourth file, I think. So if I look at my subs here, yeah, it skipped the first one because it never loaded. Um, so yeah, it skipped the first one, so that never loaded, that's my fault because of the way I had it set up. And then it skipped the next two and then went to file number four, which is the fit file. And then it skipped three more and then went to file number seven, which is another fit file. So this is two frames. And on the bottom left hand side in the live stacking section, you can see that it stacked two frames, even though we're on technically seventh frame. And that's because every every frame number two and three, we're getting this error that says image file not compatible because it's a JPEG file. So Sharp, SharpCap is not going to stack JPEG files. So you're gonna keep getting this error if you use this method. And which is totally fine uh, because you know this is this is working. And if your C star is in a is in a good network location and you can download these files pretty quickly, then it's totally fine. And you can play with the histogram here to make things look a little bit better. Let's see. All right, then we can compare this to what we see on the C star around the same time. So this is 70 seconds of exposure. And then we can zoom in a little bit. So let's see like 50%. We can see some of the dust lanes here. And, and I think the quality is probably in the eye of the beholder, like whoever's looking at this. Here, even at 80 seconds, here in my Bortle 8 backyard, we can see some of the dust lanes here. Uh, hopefully that translates well into the video. And yeah, as you notice that I'm constantly getting the error message up here and I am just closing them out. So the next method I'm going to show you is how you can actually copy the files over onto your local computer first into your local drive and then you sharp cap to stack those images and one benefit of that is that we'll only be grabbing the fit file so no more error on top and the frame stack and the frame scene will be consistent. I'll have a link to this repository in the description below but 
I created a new repository on GitHub called Copy Fits from C Star. There are two files here. One is a PowerShell script and one is a Python script. So the PowerShell script, so source director here, you'll edit out and put what we put in sharp caps. So it'll be like Z, my works, M31 sub. And then the destination directory will be wherever you want to put it on your local network. The one added benefit of this is that if you ever lose connection to your Z drive, sharp caps can sometimes actually become not non-responsive because it's trying to pull data from a network location that no longer exists. Yeah, so that's one thing to keep in mind. So this is probably even better. So I'll run this on my local and I'll show you exactly what I mean. The other file is the Python file. It does the exact same thing. We have the source directory, the destination directory, and this is just in Python. So this should work if you're using uh, Mac or Linux as well. Although I don't think sharp cap really works in those without using um, an emulator like wine or something. But I have this here. This will also work on Windows if you're more familiar with Python than PowerShell. Exact same logic. It'll only take fit files. So my local directory here, I have a couple of files. And the one I want to edit is copy cstarfiles.ps1. So I right click and click on edit. And it should open up uh, the Windows PowerShell ISC, which is the integrated script scripting environment. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my uh, let me see my URL from here, Z, and put it here. And for my subs, I'm actually going to go back one. I already have a C star M31. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to click on this and it'll do sharp cap live stacking slash, you know, M C star M31 V2, which is tonight. Now click on save. And this will run every 60 seconds. So if I if I run this, then it'll actually download all of the files. But when you're doing this live, it'll only download new files. So if you're running this every 60 seconds, it should download at most like six if you're taking 10 second exposures, but it's probably gonna be less because there's some time for dithering and other internal software features for our functionality. So, and to run this, you just do, you know, slash uh, copy C star files. You can run it within the ISC, you click on this. If I click on this, you'll see that it's starting to download all of these folders, files one by one. And if I go into my directory here, sharp cap live stacking, so you can see it created the directory and I, and these images are now appearing. And this will, this will, this is what will happen every minute when you are running this live. So I'm just going to kill this script. I'll control C. Yeah. So that ended. So it has five files. And now, assuming this is uh, you know real life, so in sharp cap now in source folder we go to go to browse, and then I'm going to click on C star M31 V2 and all images in selected folder. And then once this is done, you'll see that it will start stacking the fit files only, no errors on top. So if I click on play, you can see that how quickly it read all of those files. Um, it couldn't read the last file. It's because I think I killed the script. So. Uh, it didn't actually get all the data. It's probably just corrupted. And now let's say, you know, we're running this in real life. So it's going to start copying these files over and then we'll start seeing this number rise as the play button is clicked. You can see status five, six of seven. Um, this number is a little bit off because of the, uh, the weird file that I deleted and then six and it's stacking live. So, in this case, if I were to change the debayer preview and then restart this, it would be super fast compared to uh, reading the file from the C star directly. So I hope that kind of makes sense. You know, we, we're reading a local file instead of something off the network that needs to be downloaded every time you need to read it again. It makes adjusting a little bit easier, makes playing with the pre-processing steps a little bit easier because every time you update the pre-processing steps, you'll need to redo the stack uh, because otherwise they won't take effect. So here I'm just going to change the frame rate to maximum. I'm actually going to pause. I'm going to pause this just so that I don't have to wait for this thing to download one file at a time, which takes like a couple of seconds for each file. I'm actually going to go to the source folder since I already have all of those images downloaded, like C star M31 here all images in selected folder, click on clear. So this is um, assuming that you have all 780 frames downloaded and you need to redo your live stack. You can do this, you click here, click play, and then you can see how quickly it's reading the files and how quickly it's stacking them. 
So I'll let this go and we'll see what the final product looks like and then we'll compare it to what we see in C-Star. And then we'll compare it further and see what it looks like after a full processing in PixInsight. And of course, this was done before the mosaic mode was available. So this is what M31 looks like. Side-by-side -side comparison of the two live stacking options from the 15 minute to 20 minute mark looks kind of like this. Which one looks better to you? All right, so after a few minutes, uh, it took about seven minutes to go through 780 frames. It did the stacking. I did a little bit of uh, histogram management and we were able to get something like this. I think it looks pretty good. And comparing this to what we see in C-Star, the final image, you know, you decide which one looks better. Well, one cool thing about the sharp cap image is that we can see the field rotation here. It looks really cool. And of course we have 242 frames that were rejected and that's because of the additional filtering that we can do. We both have a brightness filter and a FWHM filter. So my FWHM filter was lower. So I noticed that later on and I increased it. So there is a whole bunch of frames in the middle where I think there was like some thin clouds going through that a whole bunch of frames were rejected. So if I wanted to restack these with a higher FWHM filter, doing this for my local drive would be much faster. Again, it would only take a few minutes as opposed to maybe an hour if we're doing this over the network, especially if your C-Star is far away from your router or something. And I think this is uh, this is probably my more preferred option because then I not only have the files locally and running it locally, but I also end up backing up all the files and I have them all here. So these were all taken in, in August 2024. And these were all copied over using the script uh, that I wrote and I was able to do a live stacking session. So pretty cool. I hope to do one of these in a live stream should be should be an interesting opportunity, especially if we can do a mosaic. I'm playing around with the histogram a little bit more and we can get some more details. And then I'm going to take all these images, put them into pixel inside, and then actually process them. And we'll see what it, what it really should look like. The C-Star S50 has been amazing. And the C-Star S30 is coming out soon. And I know it's not, the specs aren't something that a lot of people are expecting. I still think that it'll be an interesting piece of hardware. And at the making of this video, I don't think we still have a ship date for those products yet. And the method I showed you on, on live stacking C-Star images with SharpCap, it should still apply with the S30. And if you want to try the more advanced method where you copy the files over as the C-Star is taking them, then the link to the scripts will be in the description below. If you have any questions or improvement suggestions, let me know in the comments below. Also feel free to log an issue on GitHub if you are a GitHub user. Oh, and although live stacking is awesome, nothing will beat actually stacking and processing these using some external software such as Cyril or PixInsight. So this here is a stacked and processed image of the exact same data. The processing is kind of half-baked, but I'm hoping to redo this object later in mosaic mode, but you can clearly see just how much more detail is here. And after my session back in August, I realized that I was shooting M31 through a bunch of wildfire smokes. And that kind of explains the erratic FWHM values that I was seeing. So it's kind of not fair to M31 or my Portal 8 location wise. Some of the frames look pretty wonky. But I'm hoping to retry M31 in mosaic mode and see how SharpCap handles it. SharpCap doesn't really do mosaics as I mentioned already, but it, it'll be a good test and, and I'll see how that turns out. And of course, I'll try the same thing again if I ever get my hands on the S30. Uh, that may be able to fit uh, more of M31, maybe not even in mosaic mode, but we'll see how that comes out. If you have any questions, let me know. If you got a chance to try this method, let me know. I'm curious to see if anyone else has tried this. And as always, thank you for watching. I hope to see you in our next astronomy adventure. Until next time, keep looking up.